Hi, I'm Bert Stephanie from Belgium and I love how portrait photography brings interesting people in my life. About a month ago I did a review of the Fujifilm X-T5 and Fujifilm also released a video about me using their new camera for portraiture. And it's about those portraits that have received a ton of questions. So I went through the behind the scenes footage of these shoots and figured there might be some useful information in there for the aspiring portrait photographer and even for the more seasoned shooters. I've split the tips up into three sections. The first one will be about why I often prefer to keep my gear super minimal for portraiture. I call these kind of sessions free flow shoots and I'm going to explain what I used and why. The second and longest section is about light. I shot mainly ambient light for this project, both natural and artificial. I also used a small LED panel for one shoot and I'm going to share with you my favorite natural light technique. The third and final part will be a little bit on how my creative process works and how it might also benefit you. Let's dive into it, shall we? When I first started out, I saw the limited amount of gear that I had back then as a limitation. But after years of hard work and a lot of equipment purchases, I noticed that having lots of cameras, lenses and lights isn't always better. When it comes to the kind of portraiture that I like, intimate, authentic and personal, less is often more. When I do a free flow shoot, I usually only bring a camera and one or two lenses. For this project I took the X-T5 of course. Such a small yet powerful camera is ideal for this kind of photography. As for lenses, the one lens that I use for the vast majority of my work is the excellent XF 33mm f1.4. If I could only have one lens, this would be the one. Fujifilm also lent me the new XF 56mm f1.2. I didn't think I would use it very often, but I ended up shooting with it quite a lot. The third lens I brought on one of the shoots was a 16mm f1.4. I've only used it for a couple of shots when I felt like I needed to mix things up a little bit, but by no means it was essential to the shoot. Less gear means that you can focus on your subject instead of doubting which lens is best. The camera is already a barrier between you and the subject, a barrier that you will have to overcome to build a connection. More gear means a bigger barrier, it's as simple as that. So everything that you can strip away will make it easier to connect to the subject. A simple setup makes it easy to move around quickly, explore more ideas and shoot a lot in a short amount of time. And even if you as a photographer have plenty of time, there are other factors that will decide how long your shoot can be. You may only have a short window of good light or it might be cold. And don't forget that a subject has only so much energy they can give you. Being in front of a camera can be exhausting after all. I strongly believe that there's a good picture to be made in any circumstances, with any lens and any camera. And it's my job to find that picture. I'm not saying that I always find it, but I never blame the circumstances. And that mindset is key to working with a very basic gear package. It's usually more flattering if you can avoid direct sunlight on your subject. When the sun is out and I'm in an open area, I usually put the sun behind my model. This works best when the sun is rather low in the sky, but even at noon it can be done. A 
and I'm also always on the lookout for some shape to put my subjects in. But never let direct sunlight stop you. You can create really strong images with hard light. To avoid showing all the imperfections in the skin, I usually shoot a bit wider with hard light and I also look for strong geometric compositions to complement the defined lines that you get with hard light. Even with careful planning, you can't expect the gods of light to be friendly to you all the time. But instead of blaming the light and rescheduling your shoot, embrace whatever light you get. Maybe the light is not textbook great, but it's always interesting and it can spark your creativity if you are open to it. Throw out the classic rules and experiment with mood, mystery and character. There is no such thing as bad light, only bad light for what you had planned. So if that happens, simply change your plan. And now, my favorite lighting technique. I've learned it at the start of my career and I've been teaching it to others ever since I've started doing workshops. In Belgium, I've called it the Afdakskes technique and somehow the term stuck. But I know it probably means nothing to you, so... Afdakske means something like awning. Some kind of structure that covers you from the elements. Let's call it the undercover technique from now on. The whole idea is to place your subject under some kind of cover to block the light from above. Because even on an overcast day, the light may be soft, but when the bulk of the photons come from right above you, you'll still get dark shadows under the eyes, the nose and the chin. And in hard light, it's even worse because of the hard shadows. I could do a full video on the subtle uses of the undercover technique, but basically it comes down to finding anything that blocks the light from above, like a bridge, an awning, a garage, a carport, a tunnel, and then you can use the light that comes from below that cover, and that light is by definition soft and directional, which makes for great portrait light. By positioning yourself and your subject, you can go for the ultra flattering look of frontal light or a more moody and contrast driven side light that brings out more character. When I'm concerned about the limitations of the ambient light on a shoot, I often bring just one small light. Usually that means a speed light because it gives me the best power to size ratio. But for my short night shoot with Elise, I opted for a small LED panel. This is the Godox M1. It's an RGB panel, which means that I can have basically any color. I like it because it's pretty bright for its size, the built-in battery lasts a long time and it can be recharged via USB-C. I generally use it for video work, but I wanted to see what I can do with it on a low light portrait shoot. Generally, I like my light to look natural, but at night in a city, light can have any color and come from any direction. So anything looks natural. And I tried a bunch of things that I normally wouldn't do. It's amazing how much light can come out of a small, cheapish, battery-operated LED light. But I still relied on the city lights to do the heavy lifting and give some depth to the pictures. But the flexibility of an RGB light makes it easy to complement the ambient light. Unless you have the keys to the city's lighting control center, you can't change the ambient light. When setting up shots, I always start from the factors that I can't control. The only way to control the brightness, color and position of the city lights is with my camera settings and position. So I do that first and only then I'll add my light, which I can control.
These free flow shoots are not suited for any kind of controlled photography or concept based shoots. As the limited gear will force you to go with the flow, you can't say in advance which pictures you will get. The only thing I can guarantee a client is that we will come up with something cool. I just can't say what it will be. For some jobs this can be a downside, but there are always two sides to a coin. I don't see the unpredictable nature of a free flow shoot as a downside. I see it as a way to force myself to be in the moment, react to the environment and create together with my subject. Life often throws better things at me than what I could come up with myself. On one side, working in this fashion is scary, but it also gives me such a beautiful feeling of freedom. And working often in this way, for many years I have the confidence in my abilities to always come up with something. And despite all that experience, free flow shoots often still make me surprise myself. And that is something I never want to lose. You will have to let go of the idea of perfection and control. Perfection is boring and control is a limiting illusion. That doesn't mean you can get lazy. On the contrary, to work in this way, you'll have to work harder, push the boundaries and use all the features of your camera to get the most out of it. Adopt a teenage rebel attitude. When nothing works, think about what Joe, the president of the camera club, would advise. And then do the exact opposite. Try it, it works for me. And last but not least, be prepared to fall flat on your face. Experiments will fail and that's completely fine. When an idea doesn't work, whatever you do, move on but revisit the idea later. Shoot now, learn later. I'm curious to hear if you have ever attempted a free flow shoot. If you haven't, I highly encourage you to try it. I've done one-on-one -on -one training about this with many photographers and once they've let go of the illusion of control and their huge camera bag, the results are spectacular. Limit yourself to the basic when it comes to equipment and adopt that rebel in the moment I can do this mindset. You'll be surprised at the freedom and the results you will get. I bet that was a really long video and maybe I tried to pack too much information into a single film. I'm still experimenting with the best formats to make my YouTube videos, so please hit the comments with your feedback. That's it for now, I hope to see you in my next YouTube experiment.